The Yamaha VMAX was introduced in 1985. This was a snarling beast of a motorcycle that was designed to literally obliterate everything on the streets. It earned its nickname the Widowmaker because of its tendency to kill its riders. It ran relatively unchanged until 2007 when Yamaha, because the late noughties were a little bit crazy, decided that the VMAX needed more displacement, more power, and more of an ability to smoke the rear tires. Today we're comparing the retro VMAX to the new VMAX and seeing if these muscle cruisers stack up in today's world of motorcycles. This retro VMAX we have with us here today is a 1988 example provided to us by a fan of the channel called John, who's gonna explain more about his bike in a little bit, but I'll give you the baseline specs. This is an 1198cc, 70 degree V4 engine, liquid cooled with four valves, all the fancy stuff that 1980s tech could throw at it. Made about 120 horsepower and it weighed 631 pounds wet and ready to ride. This bike back in the 80s could clear the quarter mile in just a little over 10 seconds, which is honestly horrifying when you consider the suspension this has and the overall setup that this motorcycle has. But let's get John to tell us a little bit more about his motorcycle. Uh, my name is John Hudson. Uh, I live in Austin, Texas. I've uh, lived here for about uh, 28 years. This is my 1988 VMAX um, that I bought new and I, I cherish and uh, yeah, I love. Uh, I got this bike uh, back in 1989. Uh, I came down to Austin on an internship and uh, I went by Bill Casson's Yamaha on Congress Avenue and uh, he basically had a 85 VMAX there. And uh, so I bought that 85 VMAX, which is not this one. Um, and uh, every penny I had uh, to get that 85. And um, I basically drove it home in the rain and uh, had it for six months, enjoyed it. And then this showed up on the showroom and uh, I basically had to have that. And pretty much that day, uh, Bill traded in the 85 VMAX, and I got this. What drew me to VMAX is in, in college, uh, a bunch of my friends went to the local Yamaha dealership, and they were all uh, really into bikes, and I picked up some brochures, and uh, this is one of the brochures I picked up, and basically it was the, the, the baddest bike they were selling at the time. And I told my friends, it's like, I have to have this bike. Uh, the favorite thing, um, I guess, you know, it, one of the things they talk about is this, uh, the V-Boost, uh, and it's a trick that they, they put on there to have the front and rear carburetors on each side. At 6,000 RPM, they, they open up and they give more gas. And so it's kind of like a, a four barrel, uh, like an older, older car hit. And it's right at 6,000 RPM, and that's where the power is starting to come on. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a neat little trick they put on the bike that uh, you know, it's very fun to test out. Now, the original VMAX is one wicked ride, but the new VMAX that came out in 2009 was even more crazy and burly. And in fact, John also owns this machine. That's how much of an aficionado he is for this particular motorcycle. This motorcycle features a 1679cc 70 degree V4, making 197 horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 123 foot pounds of torque. This thing also weighs 694 pounds, so it's definitely not a svelte little sport bike, but it could obliterate a quarter mile in 10 seconds flat, which is about as fast as any super bike you could want. Now, over the old VMAX, this features 52 millimeter fully adjustable front forks and an adjustable suspension out back with a much more modern frame, so it should handle much better than the old VMAX. But let's get John to tell us about this machine too. Uh, okay, 2010, uh, Yamaha VMAX. Uh, since I had the, the original uh, red Generation 1 VMAX, um, and then the new one came out, bigger, better, faster, shinier, uh, I had to have it. And so it came out in 2009, and, but I had to have a matching red. And so I had to wait till 2010. I found one in Kansas and picked it up. And so now I get to enjoy the uh, second generation. Uh, my favorite thing to do is 
to uh, come around a corner or, or come off of a, a light and uh, hit second gear and just hold it and hit third and just let the thing tack out with the rear tire spinning. Um, it's a very stable bike. Uh, it will walk out and it will just come back in line with, with no swapping really at all. So maybe that's where the, the weight of the bike kind of comes in a little bit handy. It makes it stable in that regard. The fastest I've gone is allegedly, allegedly uh, not in this country, uh, uh, 140. Now with all that being said, let's get these two bikes out and let's see how they ride. Quick interruption folks, this video is proudly supported by Manscaped. You guys have seen us covering these for a long time now. We've been a proud supporter of theirs for over four years. And this is their tried and true Lawnmower 4.0 in the special testicular cancer edition. But I'm here to tell you about their new body buffing tool. Guys, if you use a loofah, it's kind of gross. That's very 2019, very pre-pandemic. You guys worry about germs nowadays. Loofahs are full of germs. They're disgusting. Throw that thing out. Get a body buffing tool. Manscaped got you covered with the new body buffing bundle. The buff package. Super buff. Gonna feel so good. So buff. I can't promise it's gonna make you more buff. I don't think that's what it's gonna do, but it will buff out all of your imperfections. See what I did there? Much like this Hayabusa has a lot of imperfections, I could probably buff out a lot of stuff on this bike. Anyways, hit that link down below and get yourself 20% off. Thanks again to them for supporting today's video. All right, ladies and germs, rolling out on the OG VMAX, baby. Give you guys a sound clip really quick. You know, it doesn't really have that big distinctive V4 sound, to be honest. Um, but it smells like gas. It's got carbs. And look at this dash right here, man. You can't see it while you're rolling, but uh, it's a sweet machine. Oh, I like this already. <laughs> it's just so classic, man. How can you go wrong with this? And you know, it rides a little bit more modern than I thought it would. So the engine honestly feels really quite modern on it. Um, even just pulling away from it from the, from the shop. Jeez. <laughs> That's a 1988 bike doing that. It should not be doing that. <laughs> oh, that, 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 no. Not in a 1988. Not with these little, little tiny forks up at the front that are completely non-adjustable. The seating position is really quite different than I thought it would be. This doesn't seat like a cruiser at all. It's like Yamaha back in the day didn't really know what it meant to be on a cruiser. Like, my arms have a nice bend to them. This motorcycle feels small. It, it feels like the Hornet, honestly. The handlebars are narrow and small, and the seating position feels a lot like the Honda Hornet. Um, it's got mid-mounted controls, which feel really nice. It doesn't have, you know, really forward-facing controls on the feet or anything like that, so it actually feels really great. The, the, the look out of the dash here is just so classic. I love this white face. The rolling uh, manual odometer is super cool. And then uh, the rev counter tiny here on top of the gas tank. What a cool feature on this motorcycle. What a cool feature. All right, guys, we'll report back in a bit. So I will say right off the bat, cruising here on the VMAX on the highway, this thing has a better gearbox than some modern Italian motorcycles. I swear to God, man. The Japanese have perfected the gearbox for decades now. I can find neutral on this bad boy, no problem. The one thing about this uh, gas tank mounted setup here is that it's actually quite hard to see while you're rolling. Now, it's not really that important. Um, the fuel light might be, because notoriously these have a very limited fuel range. I think about 100 miles, because they're very thirsty, big engines. 
but uh, yeah, through the bottom of the helmet, you can't really see the uh, the setup on the on the gas tank. So that's a little bit of an oversight, but. Overall, like throttle response is really crisp on this thing. I dog on carburetors a lot because I don't want to maintain them, but at the same time, they feel really nice. This thing's tuned really, really nicely. John does such a great job of maintaining this motorcycle. It does not feel like it's 34 years old. That's older than me, for God's sake. I was born in 1992. This thing was born in 1987 and sold in 1988, as far as I understand. So that's really awesome. Now, I'll tell you what. You introduce a little bit of lean onto this motorcycle and it's a weird feeling. You can tell the suspension is so outdated, comically outdated. On the tiniest of bumps, I'm bottoming out and I'm just not getting a confident, compliant feeling from it. I'm getting weird rebound from it. It's kind of wallowy and soft. Um, there's a lot happening that I wish wasn't happening with the suspension. But I love this classic feel on this bike, man. I got a lot of power on tap with this 1200cc V4, this classic VMAX. It feels great. I can effortlessly power through traffic here and really enjoy myself on this bike. I, I have to imagine in 1988, this felt absolutely crazy that they put this much power in a, in a big, fat, heavy cruiser like this. I mean, this thing could do a 10 and a half second quarter mile time, man. That's bizarre. Let's grab a gear down. Let's just rock on it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, <laughs> you get up to about 85, 90 miles an hour, the whole thing starts wandering. Man, this is back when uh, when motorcycles were really dangerous, dude, honestly. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is back when, when these things genuinely would kill you. Um, the Speedo indicates a very ambitious 155 mile per hour top speed. I'll tell you what guys, 90 felt plenty fast on this bike, on this frame, on this suspension. The amount of wallowing that I get, oh my god, it's crazy. I did not expect that from this bike, but again, 1988 model, I think it's going to have some, some stuff like that. I think other than Josh's uh, GS1100, this is one of the oldest bikes I've ever ridden, a 1988. I think his GS was about a 1987, if I remember correctly, or 1976, I don't know. It was, it was a super old bike. Um, and this is definitely one of the oldest ones I've ridden. I love the, uh, I don't know, man, the, the whole vibe of this thing is great. The thing, it, like, not that it feels like it's coming apart, but I feel like any t anything I roll over, I'm feeling in a bad way. I'm like, oh, I, I don't know if I should be feeling everything I'm feeling right now on this thing. Um, and the brakes are just, <laughs> you gotta plan, uh, not so much your acceleration on this thing, but your braking distances, because these brakes do not stop worth a damn. You have good initial pressure on the lever, right? Like you can actually feel the, the pads biting the rotor, but you're just not stopping. Uh, you have a lot of momentum on this thing because it weighs so much. And uh, once you hit the brakes, like I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm grabbing more and more lever and nothing's happening. There's like one amount of braking you can do on this thing. <laughs> There's like one level of braking and that's it. I hope you're, uh, you're gonna be able to stop in time because you cannot brake more than what it, you're given at the initial bite of the lever. It's so funny. You know, this engine, this 1200cc V4, uh, it's got, I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. It's got a lot of grunt, right? Like I'm in, I think fourth gear right now, you lay on it and you really feel that. But it's, what's so funny is it doesn't sound like a V4. Not the ones I'm used to anyways. Uh, an Aprilia V4, a Ducati V4, these all sound, this, this one kind of sounds like a big parallel twin at low low down. Honestly, it does. It kind of, like, I really hate to say it because I know the VMAX people are going to be just outrageously mad at me. But, honest to God, this thing has a bit of a, uh, I don't know, like a big parallel twin vibe. By the way, John's next to me on his uh, VMAX over there. Looking fresh. I'm about to jump on that one in a little bit. <laughs> But yeah, it doesn't sound like a big V4 to me, honestly. Up in the higher register, it does, right? When you get it above six or 7,000 RPM, you're like, okay, this is a, a four-cylinder motorcycle. But 
honestly, right here, like, listen. It sounds like a Ninja 650. And that's a damn shame. That's a damn shame because Honda's VFR 800 sounds incredible. And it, this, this just doesn't have that same incredible tone and character. And now we're going to be approaching some twisties here in a little bit. And I will report back on the handling of this here 1988 Yamaha VMAX, baby. Let's go. I think the thing that's surprising me about the VMAX most, the original one anyways, is just how normal it feels. The seating position feels very normal. It kind of feels like a, sort of like an SV650 almost. Like I'm not, my, my feet aren't nearly, they're not as far back, but I'm honestly amazed at how comfortable this bike is to ride. I'm having a lot of fun just, just goofing around with this thing. It's really nice to, to cruise at a slow speed with it. Um, which you would not expect from a bike that was deemed the Widowmaker. But uh, again, having used these brakes, I can definitely understand why it was a Widowmaker, baby. That is some scary brakes that it has in a bad way. Like, they don't stop the bike. But we are approaching the twisties here, boys. Let's have some fun, shall we? Try to crank this thing over on its side and see what she does. All right, guys. So throwing the OG VMAX through a set of corners, uh, whatever the word for not confidence inspiring is, if there's a succinct good word for that, that's the word I would choose for this bike. Um, it is ponderous, it is wallowy, I get it just a little bit of lean, and the whole thing just feels like it's worming around. Um, it's an interesting bike to ride, but to push it? Oh lord, this would be horrifying to push this motorcycle, to actually put it through some pace. I kind of want to try it just a little bit, just, just to see, but the brakes, my god, if I get this wrong in the brakes, I think I'm going to have a really bad time. Ah, uh, what is that? AT&T guy. Okay, we're good. Wow! <laughs> you get off the throttle, onto the brakes, you get this. <laughs> oh no, dude. Yeah, oh my goodness, you get off the throttle because of that shaft. Oh my god, this bike's crazy, dude. This is really not very confidence inspiring. Every bump, every imperfection, you really, really feel... What is, what is trail braking on an OG VMAX? What is that? I don't know. Oh my goodness, this is a scary bike to ride quickly. I'm taking it so ginger with this thing. Every bump is just like, uh, uh, uh. it's like I'm on a couch with a rocket attached to it. Honest to God, it feels like a lazy boy with a rocket attached to it. I, I understand. Oh, there's the brakes. Yep. Jeez, I'm squeezing. Guys, I'm squeezing the, the ever-loving bejesus out of this lever, and nothing happens. That is so scary. All right, we have this nice, long left-hander into this right over here. Let's see the side-to-side -side action. Honestly, that wasn't too bad. The problem is when you get off the throttle and back on it, this motorcycle just unsettles so easily. And it just feels like the whole thing is going to skirt out from underneath you. I can't imagine trying to ride this thing quickly, like properly quick. <laughs> I guess you just kind of learn to, to work with it and to trust it. But I don't have any trust in this machine just yet. Come off the throttle, onto the brakes here. Whoa, VMAX, baby. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I think uh, modern bikes have done a great job keeping us safe. Man. Honestly, my hat's off to people who used to race like 70s and 60s motorcycles. I mean, the, this VMAX is from 88 and it feels like a death trap. I, I will say, you know, from what I understand, the, uh, the original VMAX, this one here, is not the best example of 80s engineering. Um, this motorcycle definitely is a little, a little tricky to ride from everything I've heard. But uh, yeah, twisty road impressions of the OG VMAX. That is a roller coaster ride and not in a good way. Let's do first gear. Man, it's got balls. <laughs> it's got way more balls than it should have. Why are the testicles so big on this bike? And why is this guy going five miles an hour? Excuse me. I'm on a VMAX, baby. Get out of my way. 
All right, I got to I got to romp on it in first gear here. I'm going to let this Tacoma go a little bit and I'm going to romp on it in first gear. Show us the burnout. <laughs> Take off here real hard. Yeah, let's see it. <laughs> that's the new VMAX, baby. That's what that thing will do. <laughs> Yeah, John proven that uh, old age should not slow your squidding down. And he's not even old, guys. He's like 50-something years old. That's not old. I want to put that out there. I think 70-plus is old. But maybe he'll, he'll still be ripping fat burnouts on the VMAX when he's 70, I think. Because he's got two of them, baby. That's how it's done. I <laughs> just love He pulls out in first gear. Rips it. Grabs second. It just continues roasting the rear tire. I can't wait to ride that new VMAX, man. This old one's a charming, charming thing, though. Uh, what's super funny is that this handles better than a Sportster. <laughs> 1988 uh, Honda. Oh, my God. Why do I keep saying Honda? Yamaha VMAX. I think it's because I want to say Honda Magna because I know that's the other V4 80s cruiser. But Yamaha VMAX uh, handles better than a Sportster, no doubt. Just the non-adjustable forks and the weight and the suspension and the... Oh man, the, what what a what a wild ride this is, dude! What a wild ride! <laughs> That's fun. Freaking '80s bike just roasting the rear tire. That's what it was designed to do, man. Got to use the bikes. That is awesome. All right, guys, hopping aboard the new VMAX. First of all, much wider, much, much more of a beefcake. Where is the ignition? Uh, I guess that's it. I don't know where the key is. this the key? Oh, wow, that's crazy. That's a crazy key. Or neutral, kill that. It's the same, same as the WR250. That's crazy, okay. Okay, yeah, that's that's a whole lot more ponies. All right, <laughs> okay, whole new ball game. Yep. Okay. Now, okay, yeah, this is this is probably the bike that they wanted to build in the '80s, but they were just limited by the technology. This is a beefcake. What's cool is it's still got the the gas mounted gas tank mounted dash and stuff. You can't read it as much, but uh, it's still there. Oh, wow, this is totally different. Totally, totally different thing. All right, here we go. This is this is a modern motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you jump aboard this, you know, because of the shaft drive, off throttle, it still does the same thing that the other one does, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is crisp, it's smooth. It's everything you want from a modern bike. It doesn't have any of the trappings of that old one. And I can tell just how much better it is already. Uh, we're going to go ahead here in the second gear, turn right. And uh, I guess we'll just, we'll just light it up in second, see what it does. Whoa! <laughs> That's way faster. <laughs> it's almost like 1,700 cc's of V4. Oh, makes you feel good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's nice, baby. <laughs> it's got such broad linear power, dude. That's really nice. You know, this is something that I wanted to talk about with the Diablo V4 that's coming out. I think it's kind of like a, a Pretendo Yamaha VMAX because the torque is why you buy these bikes. The Rocket 3, the VMAX. I mean, the whole name of the game here. Oh, look at these brakes. Look how I can modulate the pressure on here. Oh yeah, I can grab those brakes. That's nice. Um, single piston on the old OG VMAX isn't exactly fair, but uh, it's really nice to have real brakes on a motorcycle. Holy crap, we've come such a we've, we've come such a long way, folks. We've made a quantum leap in in braking technology, and that is a really special thing. 
But yeah, man, this bike already, I like it, dude. I like it. It's got this wide commanding stance. It reminds me a lot of the Triumph Rocket 3, but just with a bit of more of a Japanese flavor to it. Big tuna fish, as it were. This thing is uh, already proven itself to be very interesting. And there's the old VMAX looking beautiful as ever. Looking lovely. But this one has these giant air intakes here on the side, and it's like got this kind of brushed aluminum look to it. Um, this thing's really cool. Really cool. I can't wait to get it more on the side of the tire and kind of see how it feels. But overall, I mean, listen to this thing. That's a beefcake. Certified beefcake, baby. What's interesting is because it has such linear, easygoing power, it's not as it's not as scary as something like a Rocket 3. I mean, a Rocket 3 is not scary, but you can really, if you, you know, very gingerly use the throttle, this isn't going to scare you. I mean, right now I'm just kind of cruising in on it. I think the trouble happens when you start believing that you can handle this much motorcycle and then you get into trouble, right? Because this thing, um, it just, uh, you know, if you abuse this motorcycle, it's going to bite back hard, dude. 700 pounds, uh, 1700 cc V4, 200 horsepower? Are you kidding me? This is not your, your dad's road king, dude. I mean, look at this thing. Oh, yeah. That is not your dad's road king, dude. This thing has top-end balls to it, which is just so much fun. Um, yeah, I want to get a nice, nasty burnout with this thing. I think that would be so much fun. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think we kind of, we've kind of figured out what we needed to figure out with motorcycles by the year 2009. This thing feels modern, it feels fresh, it feels good. Um, sure, the gauge is a little old school, but I like the big analog tack right in front of me, man. I don't need anything other than that. All I need the bike to tell me is what RPM I'm in, and I'm good to go. <laughs> that is addictive man that's an addictive amount of power on this thing um but just just in case you guys get it twisted it's not the fastest bike i've ever ridden or anything like that you know i uh i own a turbo hayabusa got to put that out there got to let you guys know early on in the video here and by early on i mean this is probably like minute 20 on this video um that we made a reference to the almighty turbo hayabusa but in terms of like muscle cruisers, this might be one of my favorites. Uh, I really like the fact that it can rev out and it's got some, some nads to it. Um, I find the, the Rocket 3, for as much torque as it makes, it is kind of like a diesel engine, you know? It just hits, it, it redlines at like 4,500 RPM or something like that. This thing, 9,500 RPMs. You're, I mean, a 1,700cc engine doing almost 10 grand in revs. I mean, leave it to Yamaha, dude. Leave it to Yamaha to do something like that. What a cool bike. We're going to get it out in the twisties, and I'll let you guys know what it's like. Cruising on some backcountry roads now with the uh, new Yamaha VMAX. And first of all, the suspension is stiff. Nice and stiff. Uh, really giving me a lot of feedback. And the one thing I'm noticing on this motorcycle, I don't know if it's because of the frame or the geometry or what the deal is, but it seems to resist wanting to be in a corner. It keeps trying to right itself up. Um, it seems like this motorcycle doesn't want to stay leaned over. Um, it seems like it really wants to uh, actually just be upright. And it seems like when you jump on the gas, uh, it, uh, it tries to just really right itself upright more than other motorcycles. And, and right here, I'm just I'm carving this, this right hand turn uh, pretty gingerly because I got two cars in front of me. But I'm about to not have any cars in front of me, which is fantastic. And the motorcycle just seems to really not really want to uh, stay on its line. Oh man, it's got a lot of power though. And the brakes match now too, you know? It's like Yamaha from the original one, they just about doubled the horsepower, but they quadrupled the braking force. So it's very confidence inspiring to ride this motorcycle. Um, very, very confidence inspiring in the twisties. Just got to keep your wits about you and know that you're on a big, big machine. Despite the power feeling like you're on, you know, a sport bike or something, and the seating position is kind of sport bike ass. This is a 700-pound motorcycle, but wow, you really don't feel it when you get on the gas. It takes off like a, like a, like a hyper naked. It's crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing this big should be this fast. <laughs> you see right here, you just lay into it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. What a, what a fantastic engine. They should have put this in, uh, in some more bikes, man. They should have just called it a day and put this in a naked bike and man, that would have been something. That would have been really, really something if they chucked this motor into a proper naked bike that weighed maybe 480, 450 pounds. But I got to imagine this engine weighs at least 200 pounds, maybe 250, just the engine alone. Um, I got to believe that. Uh, but yeah, on the side of the tire, the new VMAX, it retains the spirit of the old one. When I get off the gas, it does the same thing that the old one did where it gets a little unsettled you know when you're off throttle it just it just gets weirdly unsettled you know uh and you know you're off throttle most of the time whenever you're going into braking zones right you're off the gas onto the brakes i go right here off the gas onto the brakes it just feels a little unsettled um sort of has this feeling of like i shouldn't exist you know the the v max kind of tells me hey listen I'm an abomination. I don't know why Yamaha made me. Um, the, the late 2000s were a crazy time. Now I exist, you know, and, and please bear with me as I try my best to be a good motorcycle. But I am a little weird, you know. But the, the fundamentals are really good. The brakes are good. The suspension works well. The frame is actually really, really nice and balanced. Um, tire size is appropriate suspension is working with me and uh, again those brakes three pistons up front great master cylinder feels really nice very appropriate amounts of stopping power you know i go over here grab a brake feels really really good <laughs> oh my god it shouldn't be this fast man holy crap <laughs> It's like chill out, VMAX. Holy crap. I can't wait to jump on the highway with it and just let it rip. I'm going to let this baby sing. I'm going to do second, third, fourth gear if I can show you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. One thing I did want to mention is not only does this engine make a bunch of power, I do think it sounds better than the old VMAX. And I know that might be sacrilege to some people, but I really do think the old one does sound like a big parallel twin. This thing low down has a really nice grumble to it. Um, it's still not as cool sounding as other V4s that I've sampled, but it has more of a proper grumble and growl that a V4 is supposed to have, in my opinion. All right, folks, we're about to pull onto the highway here. And I am gonna unleash the VMAX. Victor Maximus, I believe is his, is his full name. Ah, a freaking Kia Soul got in my way. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> At the last minute, that Kia pulled out right in front of me. All right, cool. I got the red light. Yes. Here we go. Here we go, folks. Now we'll be able to show you how it's done. Wow, I mean, the VMAX kind of suffers a boost effect where there's just traffic in front of you all the time. What a bummer. Whoa, yeah, baby! <laughs> That's outrageous. <laughs> In a cruiser. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, show me any Harley that can do that ever. Oh my lord. That is a lot of fun. There we go. Yeah. Full tilt on the VMAX, baby. Holy crap, that's fast. For a 700 pound bike, that straight up pulls like an MT-10 or something. Dude, that's crazy. 
Wow! That's got a lot of balls. <laughs> oh, that's addictive. So, I've heard, and now I'm very interested in getting one. Uh, now, now I'm a little obsessed with this idea. I have heard that people supercharge these. Um, and I gotta tell you, Papa Yam is <laughs> very interested in that prospect. Can you guys, can you guys hear the squid demons emerging out of me? Um, this bike's doing things to me, guys. This bike is, uh, getting me all hot and bothered under the collar thinking about a supercharged one of these bad boys. I, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea. Listen, if anyone in the comments has made it this far in the video and knows about a supercharged VMAX, um, dude, please let me know. Please hit me up. I would love to uh, figure out how your sweet papa can ride a supercharged one of these bad boys. Because, look, it's it's fast. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's mighty fast. But, but, it could be faster. <laughs> it could have more loadout torque. Oh, God. Guys, I'm a basket case. I'm sorry. Um, I am an unhelpable squid sometimes. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down below. This retrospective on the old VMAX and new VMAX was a ton of fun. Big shout out to John for bringing out both of these bikes for us to ride and enjoy and review today. And I hope we did them justice. Hope you guys had some fun. Uh, thanks again to Manscaped for supporting today's video. Be sure to check them out in the description below. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Amy Noob!